is, is the lack of stimulus, at least the COVID stimulus in the next couple of months, the most important kind of negative uh, to come out of this stasis in Washington? Yes, if, uh, if it ends up with uh, businesses failing or people uh, getting into deep economic distress because the aid wasn't there and we continue to have you know, the, the, the suppressed economic activity that we've had all along, um, then yes, that will translate into uh, a slower recovery, obviously. But overall, you know, we've lived with gridlock writ large um, in, in Washington for really since 2010, with the exception of uh, the passage of the Trump tax cuts. You know, even when Trump had a majority in Congress, a lot of things that the market seemed to bank on, infrastructure reform, uh, infrastructure package, um, health care changes, those things didn't happen. And of course, the other years we've had divided government. So, you know, that lends itself to a lot of predictability, whether that's good for the economy, whether it's good for the country is uh, we can debate. But for markets, that lends a lot of stability. And really, the, the question is, what happens if you actually have a president who has Congress behind him and can right. actually pass things? Right, which bring, which reminds us of Obamacare, Larry, uh, back in, I think, 2010, which is what Patrick's saying. We've kind of had gridlock since then. Um, what do you make of the gridlock we're likely to see for the next couple of months and then what comes after that? I mean, should these be markets that welcome that or that brace for, you know, what's coming? Well, Patrick's absolutely right. Historically, during periods of gridlock and divided Congresses, you typically get decent equity performance. But in this case, you know, we have we're we're, we're in a, a pretty bad recession. We're trying to come out of it, reach escape velocity. Uh, Powell and the Fed made a very very powerful statement. They wouldn't give investors this month. When, when, when they were pressed on the balance sheet, in other words, the, right now we're doing about $120 billion a month of balance sheet expansion, when pushed on that, they basically said they could go up or down. And that's essentially uh, opening the door to a taper. That, to, to our firm, the Bear Trap support, that is pressure on Washington. They desperately, they don't want to go back to the Tea Party austerity days. That was deflationary. You know, this, they're trying to become a more proactive Fed. We have a lot of inequality out there. They're, they want fiscal policy more than ever. They don't want to go back to the dark days of austerity. So you're saying that, that, that markets still need that action from Congress. Sounds like you both agree on that, Patrick. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just, just a matter of what it looks like, right? So I think the Fed has been frustrated with Congress and with fiscal policy, the lack of fiscal policy in general. And that, by the way, is not unique to the United States. You know, in Europe, there's this over-reliance on, um, on monetary policy and the ECB to sort of fix things while mm -hmm. at the same time insufficient action is being taken on the fiscal front. So, you know, I do think that we're going to have a debate going forward about whether fiscal policy needs to be more proactive. And there are a lot of obstacles to making that happen.